The following is a presentation of the Bellip Sports Media Network. We're starting to hear signs of a little bit of crumbling over in the ACC. We've talked about the Pac-12 and how they've pretty much completely fallen apart, and it doesn't feel like there's really anything they can do to get back to prominence, and we're going to have to catch up with the MLB. We haven't talked a whole lot about baseball on this show, but we're going to talk about a lot today. And also, we have to bring up, we talked about Michael Orr's allegations toward the, towards the Tui family, but the Tuis are now refuting some of the allegations brought up against them. We're going to talk about all of this and much more today on Rise to the occasion. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're so happy to have you here, and we're ready to get into some more content. A little bit more awake today, a little, feeling a little bit better, less less uh, sore. Even though I, I think I've actually done more physical labor in the last couple of days, all kinds of hand digging trenches and stuff. But uh, it's it's been cra- crazy at work. But uh, happy to be here and talking sports with you guys, being able to put all that stuff to the side. But before we get into it, I want to remind everybody to make sure to hit that subscribe button. We want to make sure that you hit that subscribe and that overlay came in way larger than we originally had it. But anyways, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we, we have been growing so much and it's a huge thanks to you guys. We're chasing that 10,000 mark. So please help us out by hitting that subscribe. And of course, you can always hit that like button on this video. You can follow us on social media, all that kind of stuff. But if you want to support us a little bit further, how about you go check us out? I've got a link down in the description for you guys to join our Patreon where you can actually join and become a member, help support this financially. Uh, we're trying to grow. We have a lot of things planned for college football season, and hopefully we can make all of it work out the way that we plan to. Uh, if not, then regardless, we still want to be able to do kind of what our, our ideas, our thoughts are. We want to be able to still be able to do that for you guys in the future. And the only way by, by the only way doing that is by spending a little bit of money. We're going to have to spend money on gas and uh, maybe some some things to set up and everything. But uh, yeah, go check us out. That's in the link in the description down below. But anyways, let's jump into it. I first want to bring in my two co-hosts. We'll start off with the man from Mobile, Alabama, Blake. How we doing, man? What's up? What's up, fellas? Uh, glad to be here. Ready to talk some sports. Uh, just a long day of work and ready to relax with you guys and, and cut it up. So uh, college football is almost here, baby. Yeah, yeah, we're getting really close. And, you know, Jeremy and I know are, are, are you know, we, we live close to each other. So we're, we have a lot more plans yeah. for college football season. You'll still be tagged along with us virtually, but uh, we have a lot of stuff ready to roll. But Jeremy, here in the studio with me. You feeling a little bit more rested up and feeling better now? Yes. <laughs> Turf burn still itches a little bit, but that's besides the plan. But it was a much needed day of rest, and I'm really glad to be here. Cannot wait to talk about today's episode. I know we got a lot to get to. So I'm going to cut the chit chat and let's get rolling here. Yeah, let's get to it. And before we do, I want to bring up our sponsors for today, and that is Mahler Bros Golf. Guys, if you're interested in golf at all, this is absolutely the place for you to go. Uh, maybe you know a loved one. Maybe you want to buy a gift, whatever the case may be, for somebody else. Uh, and they love golf. If you know somebody who loves golf, even if you don't go and buy them something, you can still direct them over to mahlerbros.com. That's M-A-H-L-E-R-B-R-O-S.com. And this is a special one for us because we are powered by Mahler Bros Golf. So uh, maybe you don't want to join that Patreon that we mentioned a moment ago, but you still want to support this podcast financially. A great way is by going over to MahlerBros.com. And guess what? Just for being a listener of this show, uh, we will actually, the, the overlay says 15% off. So I'm going to bump that up and we're going to make it 15% off. It used to be 10%. Whoa. I think it still says 10% down in that little bar down on the, on the, on the bottom. Uh, but we're going to give you a special deal and we're going to give you 15% off. Go check it out. All kinds of polos and uh, there's going to be a lot more added. I'm actually wearing a new drop that has not dropped and won't be dropping for a little while. But I think we're going to try to put these on pre-order. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff in store over there at MahlerBros.com. So you can go check us out. Like I said, polos, t-shirts. Uh, we've, we're going to add to the selection of hats. Uh, there's all kinds of mugs and tumblers. And what those are good for is also the first ever that we know of 
golf themed coffee, some amazing coffee. Uh, we've we've gotten some newer coffee that has really been uh, some of my favorite all time coffee. So go check us out. And we're also adding to that array of coffee. Even uh, we just have to get more love on the coffee that we currently have before we get more in. So go check us out, MahlerBros.com. And like I said, we're bumping that discount up from this show to where you can get 15% off. We were able to hand out a lot of coffee. Uh, we have some guys that uh, over at uh, Coffee Shop Sports that are wanting to give us a little bit of a, a review on the coffee, see what they think about the coffee. Uh, I'm not sure how much of coffee snobs they are, but I'd love to hear some some critiquing or um, even even some compliments on the coffee. But we want to hear it from you guys, how you feel about Mahler Bros coffee. Uh, so you can go check us out, MahlerBros.com. Check out the coffee, polos, t-shirts, hats, and so much more. And the more that you guys show love over there, MahlerBros.com, the more we grow. Um, anyways, let's get into it today, guys. We have to talk about the ACC. All right, we already talked about the ACC and what's coming up for this upcoming season, but it, there's been a little bit of echoes, a little bit of, of sounds of crumbling in the ACC. And uh, recently I've heard that uh, Clemson and Florida State were denied both by the SEC and the Big Ten, so they threatened to leave because of some disputes and things going on, some drama going on in the ACC. But now we're finding out that the SEC and Big Ten both denied their request. So apparently they're not really interested in expanding anymore, which is understandable for the Big Ten because they've been making this huge move on bringing everybody from the Pac-12 over. And from the SEC, it's a little bit shocking, um, but I I guess kind of understandable at the same time. But uh, kind of starting off with that news, Blake, I mean, what do we kind of make of this that even even the SEC uh, and the Big Ten, I mean, they, they're not even interested in both uh, Clemson and Florida State joining? I'll be honest with you. I kind of like it for now. Um, I, I, I made my prediction of what I think this thing will come to in the years to come, but I, I kind of don't want to see any more expansion for now. Uh, just because I, I want to see Oklahoma and Texas make the transition into the SEC uh, before we do any more expanding. And I want to see how this thing with Oregon and US, USC and UCLA and all of that works out in the Big Ten, right? Um, Clemson and Florida State, yeah, I think that would have been a great grab for the SEC. Uh, but stick over in the ACC for now and see if you can make things work because then if you lose those two – you're going to have to force like a Miami to make a move and everything like that. And you're eventually going to get to what we were talking about the other night, where it's just two big conferences. Right. So I kind of like this decision to, to deny both of them uh, and keep things to right where they're at and maybe save the face of college football. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like the ACC conference a lot. I mean, we talk about Clemson. We're going to talk about Clemson a lot. Uh, you know, and I think they're still a prominent, uh, a prominent team. And then you've, of course, got your North Carolina, who it seems like they've made a little bit of a bounce back. If they can get any part of their their defense back together, that would be a, a huge comeback for them. Um, but yeah, yeah, looking at the ACC, I think it's a very interesting conference and it's a fun conference. But Jeremy, I mean, the, the ACC has coverage in Virginia with the Virginia and Virginia Tech, and they've got coverage in both Carolinas uh, with all the schools. Uh, you know, in North Carolina with Wake Forest and. Yeah and uh, North Carolina. Um, uh, I think there's another one that I'm, I'm missing out on there. But, you know, of course, they've, they've also got uh, Georgia Tech over in Georgia, just outside of Atlanta, trying to compete with Georgia. Of course, they're not going to get as much yeah. attention there, but still some some prominent uh, viewership there in Georgia, right around the, the bigger, kind of the, the, the heart of, of Georgia and everything. So they've got coverage all over the place. And, of course, like we mentioned, Florida State and uh, and uh, Cl- and uh uh, sorry, uh, Florida State and Miami, Miami. both yeah. being down in Florida. So just all kinds of coverage throughout the ACC and big names. Uh, so so what do we make of, of the fact that a couple of the biggest names in Florida State and Clemson not even accepted in, in either the Big Ten or the SEC in all of this expansion and growth? It was definitely a big shocker to when I finally heard the news that they got denied. I was really, really baffled about it at first. But I know, obviously, with all the transitioning that – everything's going on between the league and the ACC, it's going to obviously be baby steps. You can only do so much. you got to do one thing at a time, and you really just have to be patient with it just because mm-hmm. I know, you can, like I said, you can only do so much, but I know every individual team, they just want to keep chomping at the bits and just getting their getting their mind ready and just getting going into the season. But 
I know for a lot of these players, like it's probably going to be hard for them just because this is potentially our last year in this division. However, now getting the the notification for all of them getting told that they're they're not getting bumped, but all in all, you just really have to keep your mind right and just stay physical with it. Just keep being you and don't let little itty bitty things like that bug you. Just because I know we've all played athletic sports before, like little things can bother you and make you seem like you want to be a little bit different, but you just got to keep your mind right and just stay with it all or all. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And even more signs of, of kind of crumbling and really confusing news that I've been hearing here recently. Uh, and, and really nothing really sounds. So all of this may be just, just fake news that's being put out there by guys that just want clicks, but even some talks of the PAC 12 trying to stay alive by stealing a few ACC teams. And from what I read, uh, it doesn't sound like any of the ACC teams have been leaked yet, which is why I'm kind of calling maybe BS on this uh, as the time Mm -hmm. is going right now, because there's no way the Pac-12 could draw them over in my mind. But it sounds like they're trying to get some of the ACC teams, which I don't know which teams those are again. Uh, And then they're also trying to go after USF, uh, which is Southern Florida, uh, and then Memphis and SMU. So they're also trying to, to attack the, I believe all three of those are in the AAC, if I remember correctly. Uh, so looking at what the Pac-12 is trying to do to stay alive, kind of acting a little too late uh, from pr- probably all of our opinions. But do you think that the Pac-12 doing this would even have a slight uh, opportunity of, of succeeding, Blake? No. Uh, <laughs> you can't find you can't find a TV deal to begin with. And you're the one TV deal that you tried to do with Apple, it fell through. And then there was talks of TV land and all of this stuff. Well, I don't uh, know what just, whatever happened with the CW. I thought they I thought they had one with yeah. the CW. Yeah, that fell through. It feels like everything's falling through for the Pac-12. Uh, what the Big 12, I know they they denied what UConn and Gonzaga. Uh, yeah, yep. yeah, because I saw I saw that they 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 had a, a move where they were wanting to come in, and the Big Twelve just said, "No, we're we're good. We don't need them right now." And I think that's a, probably a smart move for them because you're already adding all these small teams. Try to go grab a big team if you're the Big Twelve. Yeah. Okay. So so why doesn't Gonzaga try to go to the Pac-12? You want to know why? Because I think the Pac-12 is dead. I exactly. think it, exactly. Yeah. So even, it, even it, UConn it, at that. What's left of the Pac-12? Yeah, and, and, and for you to try to go all the way to the East Coast and you're trying to, you know, trying to get USF and all of this, man, it's over. Uh, the Pac-12 is dead. Like, and and I, one, thing I don't want to see, one thing I don't want to see is the ACC try to get Stanford and Cal. Like, that, that's yeah. insane. Like, which, you're going gonna to gonna have to change the name of your conference. Yeah, which as of right now, too, I was just reading on that a little bit ago, and it sounds like even Stanford and Cal is – leaning towards nay uh, rather than yay right now in, in the voting. So the voting's still going on, and there's some still some swing votes to accept Stanford and Cal, but right now it kind of sounds like they're kind of pushing them off to the side right now and uh, more teams not wanting to. I think at the last I saw, I think it was like five to three uh, in, in votes for, for no. Oh, no. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I think there's some swing votes that could come up and really twist this thing, thing around, but I think if you get one more no vote, uh, I'm pretty sure that pretty much pushes you over the limit, and you're you're pretty much uh, gonna have to push that to the side. But mm-hmm. uh, I mean, looking at looking at trying to go over like like Blake just now now mentioned, going over to the East Coast, picking up Memphis, picking up USF uh, down in Southern Florida. I, I mean, what is the point? I mean, when we take up I take out all of this regionality, what's the point in trying to go over this far and get these teams and, and trying to travel all the way across the, the country like that? Just so they can have something to play against, I guess. <laughs> I mean, like you said, Blake, what media do you really have after getting shot down with so many occasions? It's, it's just like trying to pull the shortest straw out of the hat, but they're really they're all the same size. You really can't get a good factor out of this. It's one thing to get all these teams to – go wherever you want them to go but at the end of the day what's the point if if it's all just gonna all of a sudden just literally look like a cookie crumbling down in front of your lap like overall i think it's i think it's stupid in my opinion like why make why make this big of a deal when we already know the answer and it's just going to be a big fat no and then we're all just going to be scratching our heads the next year when we see it evaporate yeah yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And and, and thinking about it too, uh, it, the, the the comparison I would make is let's imagine that the the Titanic, uh, that whole event happened 
in 2023, and they were able to buy uh, buy tickets online. Oh, you, do you think people would be going on as they're seeing the news break down and helicopters flying overhead, showing the footage of the Titanic breaking and everything and sinking down on the ship that people would be like, ooh, discounted tickets, let's buy that. That's kind of what, what I see when, when teams are trying, you know, they're, they're trying to reach out to, I think I, I heard uh, rumors of Boise uh, and, and some uh, some other Mountain West teams and stuff like that that they're reaching out to. Like, why would you hop on the Titanic and go buy discounted tickets to the Titanic as it's sinking? That doesn't make any sense. They, they did. They they took the Titan submersible. <laughs> exactly. Oh, oh, oh. That's good. That's good. <laughs> but, uh, I mean... So- <laughs> maybe maybe a little too soon um but no. i mean lo- looking at it though i mean it kind of seems crazy i mean it is the acc is the drama over there so thick that there it, there's no really coming back from it now yeah it's no nah, it's it's dead the the acc is oh the acc my fault i thought you were talking about the pac-12 the acc Oh, or, or do you think there's something they, they can try to work out to make make things right with the teams? You know, I think Clemson and Florida State were the two that were really upset with things. Uh, mm-hmm. Those were the two that kind of made it known. I think it was last off season, if I remember right. Yeah. Uh, or either that or early this this past off season. It's been so long. It feels like. But uh, I mean, if if you can if you can make those te- they, those teams happy and work something out with them, I, I personally think you could save a lot there. I think one thing that – this might be a hot take to most people, but I think the one thing that is kind of hurting the ACC is not being able to get Notre Dame fully on board in football. Yeah, I think that is killing them Uh, because if you could do that, then you're looking at at a conference that would be shored up. And I think Clemson and Florida State would think about staying and uh, you would have a a nice little addition to your conference. Uh, And and I think that you would have – you know, look at the powerhouses, Miami, Florida State, Clemson. Then you would have Notre Dame in there. Uh, NC State has a year every now and then. And North Carolina, like you mentioned, if they could get their defense right, uh, you know, I think you would have a, a nice little kind of dupes on the come up. So, um, yeah, I think you would I think you would have a, a respectable conference. But not being able to get Notre Dame to fully buy in uh, is hurting the ACC. Yeah, and, and that's where I talked about Notre Dame. I think logistically it makes more sense for them just to hop over and become a member of the ACC fully. Uh, logistically, you're already there for what is it, uh, bas- or, uh, yeah, basketball and baseball, right? So just jump over with the rest of the sports and just become all in because yep. it just seems logistically to make sense. We brought up where I think all of us are – I think you compelled me at least, Blake, with your, your argument for them going to the Big Ten that – I think that would be a lot more fun. I think that makes more yeah. sense regionally, but region, you know, geography doesn't really matter anymore in today's sports, no. at least in college football. So, unfortunately. yeah, unfortunately, which yeah. I do agree with that. I think, I think it, it's it's it feels like it's it's not going to hurt the game at all for viewers like us who just want to watch a, a collegiate level and seeing these kids go out there and give it their all. It's not going to really affect it too much for us. But it is affecting some of the behind-the-scenes stuff that hurts college football, I think, to break it up regionally the way that uh, – not to break it up regionally, uh, I should say. Uh, so, I mean, it, that's that's the part that kind of hurts a little bit to, to see it breaking up. But uh, I, th- I think there's some good that, that we can see from it as fans. Uh, it's just I think that the, 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 the cons outweigh the pros in a lot of ways. You're right. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Yeah, but guys – Let's jump over. Like I said, it's been a little while since we've talked about the MLB, talking about uh, just really all things going on in the MLB, uh, just baseball in general, because it's been a little while since uh, college baseball. And we, I know we've touched on MLB since the College World Series and everything. But uh, I want to jump over and talk a little bit about what's going on in the MLB right now, because if we talk first, I want to bring up one storyline that has been really big. Uh, was Acuna, uh, just looking at Ronald Acuna and what he's been able to do. The, the dude has been absolutely insane. Uh, right now he's hitting around, uh, right around a, a 340. Uh, we've got 27 home runs, last I checked, uh, and then 73 RBIs and over 100 runs uh, with 53-plus bases stolen because I think that he's had... If I remember correctly, I think he stole one the other night that I didn't include in my count, so I, I put a plus sign uh, just because I can't remember for sure. But 
looking at what he's done, I, I mean, he's he's having an, a, a, a historical season overall because, like I said, with with his batting average, he's second in the league right now. Uh, with his his home runs, uh, he's thirteenth in the league, or sorry, twelfth in the league right now, uh, and then he's tied for twenty second in RBI. So I mean, just just looking at what he's able to do and putting himself up in in really the top twenty five of all players in several stats. And then I also saw something. It's not it's not letting me pull up the uh, article that that I saw this from. But uh, there's there's something along the lines of how many home runs he's had with a fifty plus uh, steals in, in a season. I, I mean, Blake, you're more of a baseball guy than either of us. I mean, just seeing how special it is for for any guy to go out there and perform the way that he has. But on top of that, his team's performance and what yeah. they're doing and showing how dominant they are as a team a huge help to Acuna. Dude, the, the Braves are just on another planet right now. I mean, they have the pitching, the hitting. Uh, their defense is absolutely filthy. Look, let, let's just—I I, want to start here. They have two catchers that are that are world class, right? So no matter either guy you put in there, uh, you're getting elite defense with what seems to be a really good stick right now, especially with Sean Murphy doing the things that he's doing. But just the just Strider and if Freed can get back right, you know, uh, and he's looked good a couple times uh, the last couple times he's been out there. Uh, but this lineup, man, and even Marcelo Zuna, a guy that took a lot of heat at the beginning of the year, he has come on and he's getting his extra base hits and hitting a bomb every now and then. But what Ronald Acuna has done is world class, man. And, and you might not – ever get to see anything like this again. This dude is swiping bags. He's hitting for power, hitting line to line, gap to gap. Uh, and and his defense also, a lot of people, I don't think a lot of people give him enough credit on the defensive side of things. His his arm out there in right field, uh, you can't run on that thing. So uh, he's by far the NL MVP. Uh, he oh, deserves yeah. a bag and, uh, and, and, you know, he, it's a blank check in my opinion from the Atlanta Braves. Um, I just think that that what he's making right now is absurd uh, for for his talent and everything. And and the one big thing is he's been able to stay healthy, right? You know, the yeah, past couple of years true. after the ACL last year, he tried to come back and he didn't really look a hundred percent. But this year, you can tell he is back. He's fully healthy and he is ready to take the crown as uh, you know. I don't want to say the best player in the league because of Shohei Otani. But he is sitting right there with Otani, Judge, and Acuna uh, as the three best players in baseball. Easily. Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, you know with Otani too, it's it's kind of crazy to to throw him in with the mix because his team is doing so horrible right now. I mean, just uh, yeah. what are they right now? He's the only They're them all just high. above the Athletics, <laughs> barely. You know, and and, and that, I, that's, I mean, what, just, that's why I said that's why I said they should have shipped him. All right, at the yeah, deadline. Because now you come out and you said, okay, well, I'm going to try to make a playoff push. All right. Yeah. And, and it fell apart. We knew what was going to happen. We knew the Angels weren't good enough to make the wild card. Come on, I mean, man. They're, they're 13 and a half games back at this point, too. I mean, that's it, it's not going to happen. I, I agree with you. Like I said, I th- think it would have been good if they could have made the push, but it was just so far fetched. It was so unlikely for them to have made the push for the playoffs that. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly with you that it just didn't make any sense. They should have just gotten rid of him, get what they can out of him for now, mm-hmm. and move on and try to rebuild next year. Why do you think that's A for A? I'm sorry for giving you all some hope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, looking at, at Acuna, though, I mean, Jeremy, I'll let you take the floor, though, seeing what he's able to do. Uh, and, and like Blake said, too, I think he's he's going to get a lot of love as a, as a hitter mm. and for the offense that he can put up but seeing him as a right right fielder and what he's done out there and being able to field the way that he does and and, and stay on top of it, it it's just as hard to be as consistent on on one side of the ball as it is on the other and he's he's done all of it oh, yeah, absolutely i mean it's one thing to play your natural position and be good but being able to do all the above at the same time is absurd and you're on a, a absolutely different planet like you mentioned Blake i know Obviously, being on the field, you got you got to take care of your arm and your shoulder because the last thing anybody wants to see is anybody throw out your shoulder or throw out your arm. Then all of a sudden, your career is possibly going to be sidelined for a while, or even if you damage it hard enough, you can be done for the year or even your entire career. Then Acuna is, like I said, he's on a completely different level. And just even the Braves in general, I don't know exactly what the record is or how far they are in front of everybody, but 
I know, obviously, I think the last time I checked, I, I don't know who they played last, but I don't think they won. But I like I said, I easily could be wrong. Yeah, I think... Uh, was it they, a they, they've been playing the... Uh, bring it up. Don't bring it up. Yeah, don't they've been it playing... Up. Bring it up, uh, I can't, can't remember. Um, they've been playing some team from New York, but it's really a really Mets? crappy team anyway, so we won't even mention them. The New York mm. Mets? Yeah, but uh, I've been making money on that. I've been making money on the, <laughs> that money line over there for the Braves. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry, Blake. I didn't, mean to, <laughs> I didn't mean to stab you in the foot with that one. Um, that was unintentional, too. Yeah, I know. I I really I didn't think about that. And then I'm I sorry. sat here trying to make sure to rub it in a little deeper. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But literally, the Braves, they're, they are the top dog of the entire MLB right now Then. As everything outside of Acuna, literally, you said their entire organization is just on a complete different level. And if they keep this exact momentum rolling into the playoffs or the postseason, excuse me, you might as well just go ahead and give them the trophy now. In my honest opinion, just because I don't think anybody's really going to stop them with how it's how it's going to be tough. But I mean, we 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 see this every year, and that's 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 the one thing that I don't think I like as much with the major major leagues. You talk about uh, really. The, the NBA, NFL, uh, and the MLB, even the NHL kind of does this where they add so many teams into the playoffs where it doesn't take too much for the for the Florida Panthers to make it their, make it to the Stanley Cup. Yeah. You know, a team that honestly probably didn't really deserve to be there but prove themselves in the playoffs and so we make it seem like they did. Mr. Uh, and, and that's that's kind of why we're against the the 12 team playoffs in, in in college football. And so just just looking at it as a whole it, it's 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 tough to, to look at it that way, but I mean, there there might be that Cinderella story that comes up and upsets them in the end, yeah. uh, which is a shame um, because you know you're you're adding so many teams and so much more likelihood that that the the Cinderella team ends up beating the Braves. Yeah, but uh, you know, did you have something like? No, I was just gonna say it. It kind of happened last year with Philadelphia getting yeah. hot. Yeah, that's you know? true. Uh, the, they were a wild card team and 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 jumped in there and. Uh, and got hot and ran all the way to the World Series, just like the Panthers and you mentioned right there is the eight seed going all the way to the Cup. So, I mean, uh, you know, if the Braves, you know, they're the best team in the league right now, you, they're going to have to sit uh, for that wild card series, and you never know what's going to happen after that. So somebody could get hot, you know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and right now, you know, we're talking about Ronald Acuna, which I personally, I think I'm putting him at number two right now in the MLB because just because Judge – hasn't really done as much this year. Uh, he's injured right now, right? Uh, he's back playing every now back? and then. Yeah, he'll sit a game or two. I mean, there's really no need for him to play the rest of the year. Yeah, they're no. just pretty much laying down and, and yeah, letting teams run that. over him right now. But, no. you know, lo- looking at Acuna, I think he is – right now I'm, I'm listing him as second best in the league just because of what he's been able to do and the consistency that he puts in line and night out. And, of course, being right behind – uh, who we mentioned a moment ago, Shohei Otani, and seeing what he's been able to do. So like I said at, at the beginning of the baseball season this year, uh, kind of looking at it, it I want to I get into baseball. I want to make that an, another uh, key key sport to watch. It's tough because of how many games are played and the times that they're played early in the season. It seems now they're a little easier because they're starting to put them in the afternoon and evening. I was say but, midday games are just hard to watch. Yeah, yeah, seeing those, seeing those early early uh, day games happening all the time. And Blake got me on the, the MLB MLB network and, and making sure to subscribe over there so I can catch it all, catch it all pretty quick and easy. Um, but, you know, it, looking at it this year and seeing what Shohei Otani's done, I didn't know that something like this was even allowed or capable capable of being done in the MLB because we look over at Shohei, uh, he's on pace right now to hit 55 runs at the end of the season. Uh, Blake, what, uh, I, I didn't, current, I didn't, yeah. I didn't have it. Uh, I didn't have it written down. Do you remember what, what was, what was Judge's record last year? Was it 64? 62. 62. Okay. Uh, so looking at it, okay. So he's on pace for 55. Uh, I, I was kind of piecing it together and looking back at his, some of his, his track record this past season, there was once where he, he hit 15 home runs in a 21 game streak if i remember correctly from from what i was looking up uh this is talking about shohei otani so 15 runs in 21 games looking at it and piecing it together and what he's done this year and i'm not just saying hypothetically piecing stuff together i'm saying hypothetically based on what he's already done this year yeah he's got a chance a slight chance but the door is creaked open where he could reach that 60 mark and maybe be knocking on the door of aaron judge's record 
the a year right after it just happens. And not only that, but I've mentioned this before, the incredible uh, talent that he has to be able to pitch the way he does night in, night out, throwing 95 miles an hour plus, uh, and then stepping behind the, the, the plate and, and trying to bat as well with all of the injury risk that he puts himself at on that side of the plate. Yeah. So, I mean, Blake, seeing what Shohei Otani is doing, do you think there's a chance that he creeps up and gets close or even knocks on the door and, and ends up meeting up with that or breaking that record that was just set last season? Yeah, I, I think there's a chance. Uh, the only thing that might get him is if he does start getting close, teams are going to start walking him and stuff. True. Uh, that is good. So it kind of like they did with Judge last year. You remember the Yankees were in yeah. that they had that big lead in the AL East, and uh, and and he got close, and guys started not wanting to pitch to him and things like that. So uh, that kind of worries me with Otani, uh, and they're just not they're not a contender, right? So it's kind of meaningless baseball at this point for him. So you know, I mean, I know he's going to chase it and he's going to go after it, but. Uh, what he's done, man, he has played himself into a seven hundred million dollar contract. So yeah, I know definitely. I know people think that's crazy, but he is worth every penny. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. I, I think you have to throw whatever bag you can possibly imagine and and throw it at him for a player his talent. Because like I said, he's a pitcher. All right, he's he's not just a second baseman or a first baseman or even just a guy that sits on the bench and then gets up to hit like this. He is he's a pitcher who's throwing. Every, every pitch in, in, a, in a game yeah. and, and you know so he's, he's sitting there racking up you know 95 to 115 uh, you know balls a game he's, he's throwing at 95 miles an hour and then stepping over there on offense and hitting and he's not just hitting it mediocre he's not just doing a pretty good job he's Launching doing bombs. it well enough where yeah he's he, he's he's getting close to records and breaking other records while he's at it and and he can even play right field too. Don't forget that. True. So, true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's he can a do it all. Man. Athlete. Yeah. I mean, I mean, looking at the dedication, the hard work that he has to the game, Jeremy, we haven't seen anything like it. No. Literally, you look at Shohei Otani's bag. His bag is about the same size as Santa Claus's sack that he delivers on Christmas. Just take it all in. It's basically just one of those magical bags like that, where it's just you look down in there and how is he fitting? You know, thirteen billion toys and stuff in yeah, there which exactly for I mean, for uh for otani it's literally. just all money shohei otani is a unbelievable athlete like i know so, there's some people that'll come out there and oh it's just a lucky year i'm like no all of us know you have to put so much effort and preparation into going and being like this like you mentioned josh and you too blake it's one thing to be a person to where you just play one side and just pitch 95 100 120 pitches or whatever but stepping inside the batter's box i mean take it for granted being a pitcher that will help obviously when you're in the batter's box but still trying to see a pitch come at you at 100 miles an hour good luck with that that's why i'm sitting my butt in the stands and watching it now <laughs> literally i would that was the last thing i would ever want to do is take a buzz of 100 mile an hour right by the eyes that would be the worst fear of my entire life <laughs> I'll I'll tell y'all something. Uh, the the hardest I ever saw in college was '96, and boy, you gotta have mad respect for guys that get up there and swing the stick like they do. Because oh, yeah. uh, when I saw that '96, I said, "Ooh, this is different." You know, yeah. uh, so what he's doing is is insane. Literally, Shohei Otani, he's just he's built different. Like, and he's also. He's not afraid to show his emotions. Like, I know there's been little mm -hmm. snippets and clips of Shohei Otani. It was, wasn't his elbow or, like, he suffered, uh, <laughs> like, a strain or something. Like, I, I saw a little clip of him going back to the dugout then saying a word that I cannot repeat on the air. <laughs> and um, Shohei Otani, like, I get it. Show your emotions. That just also goes to show you how much of a true dedicated person that he is to the sport and how much he absolutely loves doing what he does and. If I were him, I wouldn't change a single thing. Just keep being you and just keep making history and get to that record. Yeah, yeah, you guys said it really well. Uh, and, I mean, looking at him, a historical player, a generational talent. It, Unbelievable it's, talent. it's a player. I don't think we're going to see a performance the way that he puts it on from a player uh, in a very long time. It's going to take a long time for anybody to, to meet that caliper of talent and dedication to the game yeah. because I think it takes more than just going out there and preparing for your position because like you said he can play anywhere <laughs> you throw Literally. him all around the field 
So uh, an amazing talent. But looking at, at the overall, I guess first, real quick, because I didn't throw this in the notes. I didn't even want, I didn't even plan to bring this up. But I was watching watching the Red Sox. Uh, I believe it was last night, if I remember correctly. And can, can we, we 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 criticize refs all the time? But guess what? You're 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 not going to get praise when you're just calling a good game because that's just your job. It's kind of like when when you know if if I'm a window maker and I create a window and do it the way it's supposed to be made, I'm not really going to get anything extra for that. But whenever I make a window and you go and you install it and all of a sudden the whole glass falls out and it shatters on the ground, you're going to get criticism for that. So for referees, when you're out there and you're making calls, like please go back and look at the the Red Sox first, then it was the Nationals. I believe it was last night, if I remember right, because it's still fresh on my brain. And seeing how far outside the ball was thrown it was obviously a ball, easy ball. Uh, I can't remember who was at bat, um, but he starts walking to the base, ready to go, and then he hears strike. And hats off to him because I think if I'm hearing strike on that bad of a ball oh, and that man. bad of a call, I'm turning around with the bat and going after the umpire. <laughs> I was just going to uh, say I don't, I don't really care because, listen, if you're calling it that bad, they're, they're, we, that's why we need to have them on a specific payroll. We need to have punishments for them. And, and find them for these kinds of calls because that is, it's terrible. And it was in a very close game at the, at the time. Do you know who, uh, it was, who the umpire was? I don't. Uh, I don't know who the umpire was. I don't really have the umpire's names down. I'm, I'm just now getting into baseball, guys. You got to yeah, give me a true. little. I'm trying to get you, catch up on, on guys' names and stuff. Even on my <laughs> own team, I'm having a hard time keeping up with their names. Uh, so, no, I definitely don't have the umpires memorized. Yeah. But, I mean, stuff like this. We talk about this in, in the NFL a lot. Uh, we talked about it a little bit in the NBA. They need to be fined because that's just – that's egregious. Uh, I don't know if you know what play I'm talking about, but I know I, I tweeted out the video as soon as I could. Like, what the heck is going on here? I, it might have been Justin Turner at bat. I'm not – Yeah, yeah, Justin Turner. That's who it was. Uh, I just – I was having a hard time remembering who it was, just knowing that it was terrible. If it, it was an easy walk. Hernandez, I'm sorry because that guy is the worst. <laughs> yeah. He is the worst. Uh, that's why but- I was asking. It was it was bad. It was bad, and and I'm I completely agree. Like we were saying with the NBA uh, a couple months back, is like you got to hold these guys accountable, right? Uh, and and I've always said that they should have to talk to the media, just like the players yeah. do, right? Like they That's should have to idea. answer questions in the clubhouse after a nine inning ball game, just like the players have to. So, uh, and just asking the simple fact of like, hey, what did you see there? Because there's no way that was a strike. No, uh, and, <laughs> not, not there, you know, there's no way you mistake that as a strike unless you were just yeah. picking your nose. And, 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 and you know, <laughs> like, I know they get graded with the, with the, the pitching stats and all of that, like the, the box score that they have showing how consistent they were and everything. But I think you need to start holding that to their pay. Yeah. And if a guy has an off night, then, Hey, let's, let's dock his pay or something. Do, you have to do something, man, uh, because these guys are getting crazy with it. Like, I know Aaron Judge gets balls caught at his ankles a lot, and uh, it, it, it's rough. You know, that that's an unhittable pitch, fellas. Like, the ball's coming, you know, not like you said, Josh, 95-plus miles an hour. There is nothing you can do with a pitch like that that far outside of the zone. If you do attempt to swing at it, you're going to miss or you're going to hit a lazy fly ball up into the infield. Oh yeah, uh, and you're gonna be out. There's no way to get a base hit or hit a bomb with that kind of pitch. So I mean, you, uh, you, you might be, you might be able out. to get lucky and hit foul ball on that and live yeah. to see another pitch. But that's that's just the thing. He made the right call. He did the right thing, mm-hmm. and then he gets punished for doing the right thing. I mean, there's there's times where it's right on the line. And it's like, oh, crap, that was definitely, you know, just those outside. 50, those can be 50-50. Yeah, and, and those are 50-50s, and it, it sucks to see it, and you get you get ticked off seeing the umpire make those calls. But those are ones we can let, you know, if we're being honest with ourselves anyways, yeah. we can let it slide. And, and kind of the same thing what you were bringing up, uh, we talked about it with the, the Super Bowl, uh, how right there at the end, the whole game, you're calling one way. I just expect yeah. you to keep on calling that same way the whole game through rather than making that – controversial call at the end of the game when it mattered the most Yeah, when you would have let that through in the first quarter why didn't you let it pass in the fourth quarter that's kind of stuff too that we could be asking these referees if we put them in front of the mic and and you know what there's sometimes where if we were to hear the referee out maybe we'd be like oh okay yeah that kind of clears things up 
Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe that solves a lot of this debate and bickering back and forth. I mean, I guess Skip Bayless wouldn't really have a job uh, if, if we no. if we kept on uh, bringing that if we if we kind of had things solved. No, um, but guys, let, the, let I wanna, them get bottles thrown at them. <laughs> Let's see what really happens. Yeah, but guys, uh, I want to talk more about the MLB. But before we do, I want to take a break and stop and talk about something that all of us need, and that's energy. The kind of energy that helps you stay on top of your game day in and day out. Uh, that's where Built Bar comes into play. You have to trust me when I say Built Bar is the way to go. So you need to go over to Built.com. That's B-U-I-L-T dot com. And you can use code RISING2 for 10% off. Built Bars aren't your typical protein bars. They're nutritious, packed with protein. And guess what? They're also amazing in taste. They taste absolutely amazing. Uh, you can call it magic, but it's true. Uh, I know that you, you probably don't believe it because a lot of times, uh, you know, protein bars and these kind of healthy bars like this, they don't really taste good. And I agree with you. They don't usually, but these do. They taste amazing. They've got a range of enticing flavors from salted caramel to coconut, even cookies and cream. One that I think you should try to test and test out. Uh, it's amazing, amazing. It's it's all coated in 100% real chocolate uh, so you're not getting anything fake in it you're not getting anything that's just not going to taste quite right right and like the real thing it is real chocolate are you working out hiking chasing after the kids or hey maybe you're listening to a podcast like ourselves uh, no matter what you're up to built bars are the perfect companion to keep you energized and satisfied without piling on the added sugars and sketchy additives that you're going to get and all these other stuff and not only that but i've said this multiple times on the show i like to use built bars uh, and, and I have used Built Bars to get me off of things like sugar uh, in candy bars and stuff like that. So I got myself, I, I don't really enjoy sugar. My wife tried taking me out for my birthday and getting ice cream. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll cave in. I got a little bit of ice cream. I don't really care for the sugars. And a huge thanks to Built Bar for that. Getting me off of sugar, making me healthier and being able to have more energy throughout the day. And so for our, all of our loyal listeners out there, Again, a great deal for you. You can go to built.com, and again, that's B-U-I-L-T.com, and you can use our promo code RISING2, that's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O, and get a whopping 10% off your order. These things aren't that expensive, uh, and not only that, but you're getting an amazing product on top of that, but we're giving you an amazing deal on top of everything else. So again, that's RISING2, all one word, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O, for 10% off an amazing deal. So go ahead, unwrap your first Built Bar experience, or if you're a seasoned fan, try out a new flavor. Uh, they're constantly adding new flavors. So go check them out, guys. Trust me, with Built Bar, you can feel feel yourself up, and it will be delicious. So again, built.com. Use code RISING2 for 10% off. But let's get back to the action. Again, I want to talk about some more MLB. We're going to talk about the race for the best record right now because you look up there, there's a lot of teams that are still kind of fighting. I feel like you can go from the Blue Jays, Astros, uh, the Rays, Rangers, Dodgers, Orioles, and Braves all fighting for that kind of number one spot. It's nice to be able to kind of flaunt that you had the best record throughout the season. And all of these teams are really in it. And I think you could even go further down the down the list. I mean, there's, there's teams that are only 12 and a half games back, which is still somewhat doable. Not likely. But, I mean, you, you look at some of these guys. I mean, let's talk about really... Uh, maybe just these top three. First, you have the Atlanta Braves, which we talked about head and shoulders above everybody else when it comes to the talent. But they're sitting there at 77 wins, an amazing uh, win percentage right now. And then you've got the Orioles at 74. Uh, and then you've got uh, the Dodgers uh, and the Rangers, both sitting there tied at 72. So, I mean, guys there's still enough season left where really any of these teams could sneak up there and, and, and claim that title of having the best, the best record uh, in, in the MLB. I know we have a lot of big hopes for the Braves, but Jeremy, do you think the Braves are the team that are going to walk away with this, this title of having the most wins at the end of the season? I sincerely think so. Like what we talked a little bit about earlier, how dominant they are, how strong and physical they are. And just the big thing is to stay healthy. I know obviously that's a really big thing in any professional sports, but with how they keep progressing each and every game, like whether it's one little individual bad play, obviously it's baseball. It's going to happen. You're going to see errors here and there. But with the way that they're performing, I really, like I said earlier, I don't know how they can really be stopped. And looking at these guys, 
like we mentioned, you got Acuna. I'm, I'm not the best with their roster. He's about the only guy I can really name off for is Acuna. Then I know Blake being the MLB master down there, he can probably just go off and just list off so many people. But you look at these guys, I don't know really what can stop them, in my honest opinion. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Blake. The only thing that can stop them is injuries, man. Yeah, that's it. That's about it. Like, I mean, you got a Michael Harris out there. You got Ronald Acuna. I mean, you've got, honestly, I, I love uh, with the stash, uh, Spencer Strider. Spencer Strider. Yeah, yeah Spencer watching him Strider pitch. Ball. That's uh, you've got um, um, kid at third base, Austin Riley. Uh, look, everybody thought the Braves were going to have a hole this year at shortstop after losing Dansby Swanson, and Arcia steps in there and and just keeps the trend going with great shortstop play for the Atlanta Braves. They yeah. just picked up the, the Lopez kid from Kansas City, and and Ozzy Albies is out right now, and he steps in and and just the train keeps rolling on. And then what Matt Olson is doing, the addition last year coming over from Oakland uh, to Atlanta and. Uh, the, the the production that he has had, and I think he's leading the NL in home runs, uh, and uh, and I think runs also. Uh, so he's having a monstrous year. Uh, the batting average is starting to tick up for him a little bit, uh, and so yeah, I mean, I just don't see them losing this year. I think this is their year. They they've been the hottest team in baseball from from opening day to now, and uh, and. As long as they stay healthy, uh, they are going to be the team to beat. And I'm not sure anybody can do it, man. I know that that American League is thick. It is thick. The Orioles, the Rays, the Blue Jays, like, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's the Rangers over there. Man, if they still had DeGrom healthy, boy, that would be that would be That's something, cool. right? Uh, but, you know, this thing's going to be really good. Whoever comes out of the American League is going to give the Braves a heck of a run. I, I look, I'm going ahead and putting the Braves in the World Series. Uh, I'm just, I don't think anybody in the National. Maybe the Dodgers can hold them, but I, I don't think this Dodgers team is as strong as years past. Uh, but Freddie Freeman's having a great year. I think he, I think he would be second in NL MVP, uh, MVP voting right now. Uh, but you know, hate that Acuna is having the year that he's having for a guy like Freddie. Uh, but uh, it's going to be a battle to the end, man. And and as long as this team stays healthy, I think the Atlanta Braves are winning the World Series. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to it's hard to argue with it too. I mean, what what team do you look at? I mean, we, uh, I, I will argue with maybe your your point that from opening day, I think the Tampa Bay Rays were hotter than anybody anybody else starting off yeah. that long. But I get what you're saying, and I think they've been most consistent throughout the whole season because yeah. the Tampa Tampa Bay Rays, you saw them start off super hot, have that down downward spike and then just bump back up with, with their production and maybe have a few losses again throughout the season, yeah. where the Braves just seem like without the injuries that they went through earlier on in the season, they were hot, hot, hot all the way th- all the way through and just staying on that consistent pattern. Um, you know, and, and like I said, other other than the, the, the injuries that I think affected them the most, uh, they, they truly have been the most consistently good team. And the Rays just lost Wander Franco. Uh, to those allegations for now. I don't know what's to come of it, but, uh, boy, if, if yeah. any of that is true, uh, yikes, he doesn't need to ever play in the, in the no, major league. Not major he, league. he needs to, yeah, he just needs he to, needs to go sit yeah. over in a, a you know, prison cell somewhere for a little while and think about his actions. Yeah. Hey, Blake, I'm going to put you on the spot. If mm-hmm. the playoffs – if if you had to go straight to the conference – conference champion. If you had to go straight to the championship game, who would you see being the two teams in the championship? So obviously the Braves. Yeah, I would. I would say the Braves and Minnesota Twins. Yeah, <laughs> um, man, the American League. Um, I'm looking through the standings right now, trying to pick a team, and it's hard. Yeah, That's I'm gonna thing. go. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with the Texas Rangers with their addition of Max Scherzer. I like that. that. I like that. Uh, and and the way they're hitting the baseball right now. I wish they had a little bit more outfield help, uh, but but I like what the Rangers have built over there, man. As long as Corey Seager uh, and and Marcus Simeon can stay healthy up the middle, um, you know, Corey Seager has dealt with injury after injury. They really need him, man. The Rangers have to have his stick and his glove in the lineup. Uh, and and if they can get all of that put together, I really like the Texas Rangers. 
Yeah, yeah, I like that. I, I wasn't, I wasn't really thinking about them adding them in, but I, I like that. I because off the top of my head, I'm trying to think. I think the Orioles are probably the best team over there, but I just don't see, I don't see the streak lasting for them to make it that far. I don't see that out of their squad. The playoffs are different, man. Like yeah. they, they haven't been in the playoffs and and things. And look, I know everybody is going to look at that and say, "Oh, well, the Rangers haven't been there either." But the Rangers have a guy like Corey Seager who has been there. You know, uh, they Max Scherzer who won a World Series with the Nationals. You know, uh, they have guys on the roster that have been there in in that uh, environment. So. Uh, yeah, I just think they're. Uh, I think they're built for this run coming. Out. And do, don't sleep on the Blue Jays, man. Don't sleep on I, the Blue I like Jays. That pick. Like yeah, that. yeah. I think the Blue Jays are another one that I was kind of looking at, and and I would say the Rays, but like you said, Franco. Uh, if you're missing him, I, I think that's that's another thing. And not only not just missing him, I think I think ultimately when you when you think of a team losing a guy, and even if it's just injury, I think that hurts the team. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, just the overall team morale. But when this kind of news hits the team. It, it yeah. probably I, I feel like that's going to hit your team morale a little bit harder than just an, an injury or maybe he just gets cut or traded away whatever the case may be I, I think that's a little harder on him but yeah I mean I'm, I'm looking over at the Rangers I feel like the Astros have what it takes I think that's another team to kind of bring up uh, over there on the American side uh, you know I, I just I don't know I don't I don't have a whole lot of faith in the Phillies I do think the Brewers have been hot lately where man they they really bounced back in probably the last two and a half months or something like that. I think that. I think they've really been fighting hard and having a really hot hand. Uh, so I, I really like the Brewers, and I think the Cubs are kind of right there too. If, if you're looking at teams that can upset, I think the Cubs have been hot at the right moment right now too, trying to sneak in there. So uh, you know, there, there's a lot of teams looking at it overall that, man, I, I, I'm obviously picking uh, over in the NL uh, side of the bracket. I'm obviously picking the Braves, but I think there's other teams that could sneak up there and kind of surprise you. I didn't uh, see the Cubs. Look what they did. They they pitched two out of three games against the Atlanta Braves. I mean, yeah, that was that was the last thing a lot of people were even thinking. I have a lot of friends. My friend Carson's a big Chicago Cubs fan. He thought there was no way in heck that they would even come close. But all of a sudden, then the next thing I know, it I get a phone call. He's screaming like a little girl, saying, "We just beat the Atlanta Braves." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, looking over at the AL East though, real quick, because I, I know we brought them up throughout the season. Uh, and, and I know it might be a tough thing to talk about right now for you, Blake, but I'm going to rub it in just a little bit longer. Uh, your your Yankees are sitting dead last. They're just, they're terrible. Dead last. All right. Uh, over in the AL East, uh, the Yankees, they're, they're really bad. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I keep they, on. Are. <laughs> they are. They're, they're doing, they're doing terrible. I, th- I think right now a lot of it is just, hey, we're out of this thing. Let's just stay healthy and, and move on Make to next season. Uh, that's that's kind of that that's the only thing I can really think of right now. But I think you're about to make Blake cry. <laughs> but looking now, at the rest look. of the, the 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 division right now, that whole division is hot because we've talked about them throughout the season. Everyone is still above 500. Uh, the Yankees sitting right there at 500. But uh, the the whole division is over at or over 60 wins now with the Yankees right there at 60. Uh, they're, they're the only ones right at 60. Everyone else has more than 60 uh, because they're they're dead last in their division. Uh, I don't know if you knew that yet, Blake. But looking over there, I mean, the Baltimore <laughs> Orioles. salt on the wound, man. <laughs> hey, there's, there's got to be a little bit of rivalry here now. You know, we, we, we talked about that earlier. We're going we're gonna to have to cook that up. You're a Red Sox um, <laughs> fan, but you're not even wearing Red Sox. True, I'm not. I'm wearing black socks. Does that count? No. But, um, you know, we've got the white socks, the red socks. We've I got the blue, you, blue socks, black socks, uh, pink socks. Um, Orioles hitting it hard. Uh, Tampa Bay Rays have been on good all season, like we mentioned from the beginning of the season, looking red hot. Uh, and then, like you you mentioned, the Blue Jays being one of those sleeper teams to watch out for. They're seven and a half games games back in their division. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just, just looking at, at all of these teams, and then, of course, the Red Sox, have been looking good all season, which is shocking. Uh, I, I didn't see that. I think adding Rafael Devers was a huge ad- addition to the team. Yeah. I think he's been playing outstanding uh, really ever since he came over. Um, just looking at, at, at that whole division, of course, I think the Yankees had their spurts and their moments where it looked like, okay, they're starting to turn things around, uh, just didn't quite work out. And like I said, I think the last the last few weeks really have just been letting off the gas, and it doesn't seem like there's been any heart or or a really hard attempt to actually push for the playoffs. Yeah. Um, but looking over that that division, I'll let you, you talk real quick about your Yankees and the rest of the, the division there, Blake. 
Uh, look, the Baltimore Orioles have been a surprise to most people. Uh, I, I don't think a lot of people thought that this was the Orioles' year to really make a move, but they have, and uh, they've, they've brought their uh, farm system along and bringing a guy like Adley Rushman up and through that system and getting him to the league, that was a great addition for the Orioles and keeping guys like Cedric Mullins to stay around and, and things like that. Uh, and then their pitching has just been phenomenal for the Orioles and uh, and guys like Gunnar Henderson, him figuring things out. You know, he's right here from the state of Alabama, was supposed to be an Auburn Tiger, uh, but chose to go to the Baltimore Orioles. So, uh, you know, they they're going to be a contender, man. They're going to be there in the end. Um and, uh, you know, you look at the Rays, they've kind of had their slumps here and there, but their pitching staff is elite. Uh, they can hit. Um, and then you got the Blue Jays, man, who didn't start off too hot, but they've slowly come around uh, and, and they're really starting to click, getting things together. Um, you know, Vlad Jr., Bo Bichette really carrying that team. Uh, those guys are a contender, in my opinion. They're hot. They're a team that you really need to look out for. Uh, and then you go to the Boston Red Sox, man. Look. The Red Sox, we, we knew that they weren't going to be a World Series contender this year. Everybody thought they would finish last in the division. But what they've done is pitching has gotten better. Hitting has kept them in many, many of games, right? Uh, th- that lineup can hit, man, and they've been doing it without Trevor Story. Uh, so, you know, I, I think there's some some promise for next year. You look at the Red Sox and you say, hey, next year we can grow on this, right? Uh, so I don't think their year is this year, but possibly next year the Red Sox could be a contender once again, as they should be, right? Uh, and then you look at the Yankees, man. Look, I could talk for 24 hours on what's wrong with the New York Yankees, and I think it sits in the general manager's office with Brian Cashman. Uh, just not going to get a superstar and, and making moves uh, at the deadline and just not really – given a damn about this team because like I've said in the past is if George Steinbrenner was still alive, uh, mm-hmm. everybody would have been fired two years ago. Okay. Like this, the losing would not have been put up with and George Steinbrenner is rolling in his grave, looking down at this saying, Hey, what in the hell is going on? All right. Because you bring judge back, but what improvements did you make around the team? You didn't make any. You didn't make any. You you went and got Carlos Rodon, all right? That was supposed to be a big help, but he, he started half of the year on the on the IL and with back problems, and then he's come on as of late and gotten his tits ripped, all right? So he hasn't had the stuff that he had out in San Francisco. Frankie Montas, you got him from the Oakland Athletics. He come over last year, got his tits ripped. He's been hurt all year. He hasn't done anything. Uh, your lineup can't hit. Uh, you, you've made no additions. You passed on a guy like Bryce Harper. You didn't even call him when he was up uh, for a contract extension with, with the Nats, and he chose to go to Philadelphia. You didn't even call him. You didn't even try to make a move to get Juan Soto. You're not going to try to make a move to get Shohei Otani. So what are you doing if you're the New York Yankees? What are you doing? You're, yeah. you're, you're wasting Aaron Judge's prime years for nothing because Brian Cashman is a terrible GM, period. Yeah. Yeah, we talked we talked a little bit about them too around uh, trade time too, and you know, kind of the trade yeah. deadline and and how disappointing it was from what they did pick up. Uh, it just wasn't really anything special. Um, but you know what? One one thing I'm really jealous of from you Southerners is kind of the, the phrases you guys come up with because I feel like you pop up a new one every once in a while. Jake Crane's always good with coming up with some and. Getting his tits ripped. That was a new one for me. I like that. <laughs> I, I, I love your go to. Like they. They're the best. Uh, I love cheeks yeah. when you were talking about it the other night, and then all of a sudden talking about tits ripped. I'm like, oh my god, this this yeah. guy's got some. Man, we've used that. Uh, we've used that for years. Like, I mean, in high school, we'd be like, hey, rip his tit, you know? Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I love uh, it. Yeah. But yeah, anyways, uh, looking over looking over at the AL East, uh, ultimately just a dominant. A conference and and you know I mentioned this whenever I, we, I first mentioned I said I was like I'm, I'm I'm diving back in to be a Red Sox fan again I'm gonna make this thing uh, work and it's gonna be tough for the first few seasons because they suck but looking over at them this year they they show a lot of promise they looked so good this year in such a tough division yeah. uh, and so it just sucks to see how good they are and the rest of the division being so good on top of it you know and just kind of beating them down like you said the Orioles didn't see that coming. 
uh, and, and, you know, I think that that's really the biggest one over there in, in that division of uh, mm-hmm. just, you know, and of course, I think the, the Blue Jays and, and seeing where they've they've gotten so hot here as of late, which could really be a great in their favor uh, here towards the end of the season. But uh, guys, that's pretty much pretty much all that I have for the MLB. I do want to dive into another another topic that we discussed on our last episode. I feel like my brain wasn't all there. I felt like I wasn't just I didn't I wasn't on my A game. I was still tired uh, on Monday when we, we recorded, but what were you I'm a little more awake now. Helmet? So maybe I, maybe I don't remember exactly what all I had said uh, in, in the past about this, but hopefully I can get my thoughts out clearer today than what I had before. But we talked about the the twoies and uh, the the or uh, kind of little allegations going on. Michael or allega- allegations coming out that uh, they they were withholding funds and and all kinds of stuff. Uh, really, it kind of almost seeming like they did don't really care about me. And so the Tui family have have made statements. They say that the the ideas, uh, you know, pretty much everything that that all these allegations. Uh, I'm reading this article from the Score, and it says Sean and Leanne Tui uh, are calling Ma- Michael Orr's claims that they enriched themselves at his expense outlandish, hurtful, and absurd, and a part of the shakedown uh, of, of all of this. And so. Seeing everything that they, they've, they've come across here recently, all these allegations, and of course trying to tear down their name, uh, it's it's been very hurtful towards them. And seeing them not directly come out, I don't think they're making these statements directly, but they're making them kind of through uh, their attorney, um, Martin Singer, uh, which he also came on and, and said uh, that the Tuies are heartbroken and accused or of threatening to plant a, a negative story on them unless they paid him out $15 million. And so uh, it sounds like there's something going on behind the scenes. I know we mentioned this a little bit. See, there's got to be something going on that we don't know about, something that's not being brought to light. Why did he want all of this money? You know, what was going on with that? Uh, you know, and, and looking down through, I mean, uh, uh, something else that, that kind of got brought up here, um, uh, if I can find it here in this article, uh, that, you know, basically th- that they're they're hoping that he'll regret making these allegations and they can try to kind of reconcile everything upon him. But uh, kind of in Singer's comments that he said uh, here, he says, in the meantime, however, they will not hesitate to, to defend their good names and stand up and shake down and uh, defeat this offensive lawsuit uh, or file this petition. Uh, I'm trying to find where they said something about uh, kind of how how crazy it was. Here it is. The, the Tui family statement says the idea uh, they, they sought to profit – off of or is not only offensive it's also transparently ridiculous the statement notes that the twoies are worth hundreds of millions of dollars and the notion that they would uh, kind of connive to to withhold a few thousand dollars defies uh kind of the belief and this is something that we talked about quite a bit uh that you know just kind of looking at it it seems kind of outlandish it seems kind of unbelievable uh, kind of looking at this and seeing how much they're worth and the fact that they're saying that they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars i mean they're they're richer than what i even realized they were and so kind of looking at that and seeing it doesn't make sense that they would go after that they would see money you know money signs from a kid that could make them maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars uh and the fact that they wouldn't f- you know kind of foot over you know a few thousand dollars here and there uh, as, as he deserves it, it does kind of seem outlandish. And so, I mean, kind of hearing something from the Tui's perspective here, uh, you know, Blake, I know we, we both had kind of similar ideas, and I think all three of us kind of had similar ideas from what we're hearing from them now. Does this stuff being brought to light kind of kind of make us have even more uh, of, of, a, of a hold back on, on maybe kind of slandering their name or anything like that? Sounds to me like somebody ran out of some NFL money. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that honestly, yeah, that's that's kind of where my brain's going. I've thought about that. Yeah, and it's what it sounds like, right? Like the dude's writing a book and all of a sudden, uh, right before the book's released, he wants to come out and say that, oh, this wasn't real and everything. Like I said last episode, fellas, is like he had the opportunity for fourteen years to come out and say, Hey, like things aren't going great with, with us, like in the family, like uh, they haven't been paying me what I'm supposed to be making. And, and you know, like I said, last episode is he was interviewed and they were like, well, what, what about the movie did you not like? And he was like, well, I didn't like how they portrayed me to be dumb. 
and like I didn't know how to play football. And he was like, because that wasn't accurate. All right, well, when, then during that interview, why didn't you also say, hey, by the way, the Tuies, they're frauds. All right, like they're not giving me the money that I deserve off the movie. And, you know, I deserve this much, this amount, and I'm not getting it. But instead, you wait till you've been retired a couple of years, and it sounds like you're starting to run out of money. So you're wanting to write a book and you're wanting to make this claim that they're bad people. Like, come on, bro. I mean, the dude was like 18 years old when they took him in, 17, 18 years old. I mean, come on. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, some things don't add up here, man. Like, now, like I said, if, if they did do it for that reason, then that is wild. They need whatever punishment comes to them. Uh, but the way I'm looking at it right now is, Things just don't add up, and it sounds like he's uh, having a cry for some money help. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of what it's starting to sound like, and and I'm I'm not one to put any ideas out there, so maybe I should just hold this to myself. But I'm I'm, I'm going to put it out there just as as maybe kind of stating my we comment. That's what we do on the show. Yeah. So my comments are uh, that I hope he's not getting himself into some kind of trouble that he needs this money for something stupid he did. Uh, you know, because he, he was a phenomenal player in the NFL. He has an amazing story to tell on where he came from and how he got there. And the blind side helps with that story. I think that shows, you know, what he went through. And, and yeah, I mean, maybe maybe it made it seem like he was a little dumb that he didn't know how to play football. I, I agree with that. Uh, and, and I think even some of his comments about that were that it kind of made him look stupid, even academically, which I don't yeah. think was the case in the movie, because I think in the movie, you saw him. I think it was a little bit, but a lot of times in the movie, it was showing that it wasn't that he wasn't smart. The teachers were like, hey, don't give up on this kid because I think there's a lot of brilliance. He just doesn't want to try. Yeah. And and I, th- I think that's what the, the movie was trying to portray. Uh, and, and maybe it didn't do it the right way. But, you know, looking at it, I mean, like I said, I just hope he's not getting himself into some kind of trouble where he needs this money desperately for something he's gotten himself into or yeah. like you said maybe maybe he is just running out of that money and he says hey mom and dad I, I need a little more uh so maybe i can i can cook up these allegations i know gas money is expensive now these days but i don't think you can go through that much money especially I mean, if he's still driving around that big truck yeah <laughs> yeah exactly i mean it is a four for crying out <laughs> probably not that truck he wrecked but, that one but you can never know they got enough money maybe they can repair it but, i mean you can never know but looking at this entire situation i i really just want to see what is being said under the table? Just because there's so much things that still obviously haven't been said. Just because I know this is just still recent. It was what Monday, or yeah, Monday that I started seeing it. Yeah, and I know all of us are really anxious to see everything that plays out in the picture. But I'm all on the same boat as you, Josh. I really hope you're not getting into some significant stuff to where you're gonna eventually look at yourself back in the future and say man, I really wish I couldn't have done that, or why did I even think about doing something like this? The last thing any one of us or anybody in general really wants to see is someone struggle, but struggling to the point to where you you got yourself in this particular situation. The, mm-hmm. Like, you can go off and off about this, but just do the right thing, but you don't need to make this a big civilization of a of a dispute for what it's becoming. Well, and, and here's where I'm starting to lean a little more. I mean, I haven't seen these documents, so maybe they're not actually there. And I, it's it, everyone, it, both sides, innocent until proven guilty. Amen. Um, and both sides. What that goes for Michael Orr. Even though I'm, I'm not buying his story yet, doesn't mean that I'm not willing to, to wait well, and hear, hear, see, and everything. But Martin Singer, their, their attorney, also noted uh, evidence that exists in profit participation checks and studio accounting statements for the movie uh so i mean that's that's part of it too that i mean if this stuff really does exist that's going to shut this down really quick and i don't know why this wouldn't have been brought up right away and be like michael you're kind of your way out of your line here because we're, we're seeing all this stuff exists Blake, you uh, said the best why wait 14 years yeah yeah i mean and also i i also wanted to bring this this story back up because like i said we we all said it uh on Monday, Monday, so I guess Tuesday's episode uh, that you know we wanted to follow this story closely. So we're gonna we're gonna keep on bringing this story up as we see more kind of unveil. So you can stay tuned to hear more about that. But I do want to bring it up as well, just to to call call out to everybody. So there's been this huge movement, and it's this cancel culture trying to cancel Sandra Bullock to to resign and, and to give up her her Oscar. 
because of this movie. Now, really? let's get this straight. What Sandra Bullock did is she was given a script and to act to that script as best as she could, and that's why she won this Oscar. Whether there was things that went on behind the scenes of this movie and really what the bad thing about everything that happened is what happened with the money that came from this movie. That's really what is so bad about this whole situation um, yeah. because like that's the only thing that can be proven. You can't prove their intent of why they took Michael in, though I think that's part of what he's trying to prove. I don't think you can prove that. Uh, it's going to be really hard to do that because their intent from what they say is that they brought him in to give him a better life and then seeing the, the success that he could have, pushing him to, to earn that success and, and to, to get there. So with the money after the movie is what's really in dispute when it, when it all boils down to it. So trying to cancel Sandra Bullock and, and, and say that she needs to give up that Oscar for acting and doing what she could have done. I mean, she she has nothing to do with the drama is what I'm trying to say. So try, trying to take away accomplishments from her. She did a great job with the movie. All right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and she, I, I can't really think of anybody else who would have been able to play the part as well as she did. No. So, I mean, just leave her alone. Leave her out of this drama. Leave her out of this whole situation because she's not a part of the drama. Yeah, and Josh and Jeremy, if she needs a shoulder to cry on, you know, I'm always here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And you know what? I'm, I'm sure your wife would understand, you know, yeah, if, if she wanted to come to you of all people, she'd understand. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll even talk, talk to your wife, but like, Hey, you, you got to understand yeah. the situation. That's He's got to comfort Sandra Bullock. Well, yeah, I mean, at least this ask her if she's a Yankees <laughs> fan first. I hope she is. If not, uh, I'm going to have to send her on her way. <laughs> Based on the movie. I think she's an Ole Miss fan. So, uh, yeah. You know, who yeah, I'm gonna have to send her on her way then yeah, because say, yeah. how's that gonna work with Auburn? But yeah. Jeremy, Jeremy's got a shoulder too, so uh, I'm gonna stay out of this. I, I'll let you two kind of fight about who's gonna be Blake, the shoulder to rock, cry. Paper, scissors, well, let's go. <laughs> I gotta stay out of it. I gotta stay Woo! out. Of it. I win by default. <laughs> let's right, go. I, I love it. Nah, but in, in all seriousness, though, I stop with the the constant trying to find somebody to add in there and trying to find a reason to be mad at somebody yeah. that's that was some of the stuff that i've been seeing on social media that yeah she needs to give up the oscar no stay out of it just yeah. keep her out of it because she's not a part of it Josh, uh, so it's just all gonna, outlandish are they going at tim mcgraw too or are they just i don't think he her? won any awards for it anything i think sandra bullock was the one oh, that won okay. the oscar for i didn't it. know if there was so a I, i'm sure or... i'm sure they're going to try to cancel the, the movie i mean if the if the movie comes out I don't, I don't think you can cancel the movie either because, like I said, trying to prove their intent is impossible to do to me. I, I don't know a way that you can. Yeah. Show me a way that you can prove their, in, prove their intent, and I'll, I'll retract that statement. But as of right now, you really can't do that. So I think the movie should stand as, as it is because right now, the, again, the dispute is what was happening with the money that came from the movie. That has nothing to do with Sandra Bullock. That has nothing to do with 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 uh, you know with uh, Tim McGraw with the movie itself. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the Tuies and and Michael, Michael Orr and mm -hmm. the financial situation that was going on between them. So ultimately, I say leave the movie alone. I, I don't know if you guys disagree with me on that, but uh, you know you, you guys can. I, I want to hear from you guys too. I don't I, I don't think I brought up a, a question of the day. There was a couple of questions down on the little uh, ticker down below, but. Question of the day that I want to hear from you guys. Comment down below for me, please, because I want to hear your, your comments. Do you think that this movie uh, or even the actors in it should be affected at all by the drama going on? Because personally, like I said, I don't believe so. I think that the movie is the reason why there's drama going on, not drama causing the movie to be canceled. Uh, so there I said it, and uh, I'd love to hear other comments. Uh, and, and who knows, if you make a compelling enough comment in the in the uh, comment section down below, we'll have you come on and state your case. Uh, how about that? I'll throw that invitation out to anyone who can give me a compelling argument. Um, but anyways, guys, that's pretty much all that we have for you. We thank you so much for watching, for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's a great way to do it. And bam, we have the big old overlay right there in front of your face. <laughs> I'm going to have to fix that again, even though I just fixed like it a small, moment ago. Huh? But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button uh, as well. That helps us grow and 
share us on social media. You can also join us on social media, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, or if you want to call it X, it's going to be a hard transition for me. Uh, Instagram, TikTok, all that fun stuff. We're trying to stay as active as we can on there, but we also want you to go and join us in our Patreon and help support us financially. So you can see that link down below in the description. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can give us a five-star review. That's a great way to help us out over on the podcast platform as well. Uh, again, we just thank you all so much. We've been growing so much on our way to 10,000. Let's try to hit maybe, I don't know, what's realistic? I feel like 4,500 is realistic to try to hit before college football season. I feel like Josh yeah. Pate's hitting for 2,000. Crane Company's going for 100,000. Uh, so, you know, let, let's let's try to shoot for 4,500. Uh, you know, we're not going to be able to hit that 200,000 like like Josh Pate. But Let's let's go for forty five hundred guys. Uh, I don't. We're at four point two six. I just four point two six. Okay, I think we were like four point one last time I saw. So you guys Salty are the reason guys. why we are growing, why we have so much success, which is why we're trying to bring more to you guys, uh, more through Patreon, more on here, all that kind of stuff. So please uh, show the love. Uh, that's pretty much all we have though. So until next time.